bottom of the hour. Stay tuned now for The O'Reilly Factor. That's coming your way next. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thank you for watching us tonight. Holding people accountable for their actions is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Many viewers were surprised when I told Judge Napolitano that if guilty, I would sentence the parents who stood by and watched the sex, booze, and pot-fueled teenage party to 30 days in jail. Rochelle and Robert Ween threw a party for their son Jeremy and allowed a stripper to perform a sex show in front of at least 50 teenagers. And now we learn that other incidents involving booze and kids reportedly happened on or near their property in the past. Judge Napolitano said he would have fined the couple and given them community service, but that's not enough in my opinion. I believe society has to begin sending some messages. The conduct of the Weens adding to the corruption of children was deplorable. Why let them skate? Why not punish the weans in a way that has an impact? Kids are being corrupted all over the place, and society is doing little about it. If this doesn't stop, America's future will be damaged. Take my word for it. In the past year, there reportedly have been a number of inappropriate parties attended by students at Horace Greeley High School in Chappaqua, New York. And that is a school where some students posted sexually explicit details about high school girls on a website. The students were not prosecuted. The girls were humiliated and damaged forever. Now, we can't blame this on the Clintons who live nearby, but you can blame it on school authorities who are now running away from the press. These people certainly knew what was going on. You chose to hush things up to protect themselves, of course. Talking Points continues to be amazed at the lack of outrage by many Americans over incidents like this one. You would think the citizens of Chappaqua, led by Senator Hillary Clinton, would hold a town meeting to try to sort out the problems. But the thing is, many don't see these kinds of activities as problems. It's the same thing in the Condit case. Millions of Americans, including most members of Congress, feel it's entirely appropriate for Gary Condit to continue to serve in the House. Of course, the appropriate thing is for him to resign because he did not fully cooperate in a police investigation and has sullied the reputation of the House. A hard thing to do. Condit is hanging on because he needs the money. In two years, he can begin collecting a $20,000 a year pension for the rest of his life, and he's now making $145,000, not including close to a million dollars a year in expenses. Condit is under no pressure from his peers to quit, and so he can duck the press and play out the string. And the people who run Horace Greeley High School are pretty much using the same strategy. Dodge the press, hope the whole thing blows over. And it will, but not before millions of American children have been taught yet another tawdry lesson. That's the memo. Now for our top story tonight, reaction from Chappaqua. Joining us now is Robert Eber, an attorney who's lived in that town for 23 years. His two sons graduated from Horace Greeley High. Also, Phil Reisman, a columnist at the Journal News, a local Westchester newspaper. All right, Mr. Eber, we'll start with you. Um, your kids went there, and I know they're doing very well now. One went to Harvard, one went to uh, uh, Cornell. And there's no question that the high school has a, has a good academic reputation. You live in a fairly wealthy uh, community there. But I'm seeing a pattern of behavior at this high school here that's very disturbing. What say you? Well, I don't think it's a Chappaqua problem. I think it's a parental problem. And I think that the press has taken it and said, Chappaqua. I think it could have happened in Gross Point Farms. It could have happened in Beverly Hills. It could have happened in Shaker Heights. And then would you call it, would it be a national story? Then would have you called it a Shaker Heights problem? It's a parental problem. I condemn it. All right. I condemn I, it. I condemn I disagree it. I agree with you in a little bit in a sense. I believe that probably these things do happen in, in many communities, and we just don't hear about them because the parents don't get away with it. But here we have a, a specific high school where this isn't the first time. I mean, it, I think that the posting of these little girls' sex histories on the website was worse than this. I think that was worse. Nothing happened to those kids. They got it. They graduated. They were allowed to, you know, they weren't prosecuted. And the principal runs away. Mr. Reisman? Well, I don't. I, first of all, I, I can tell you that there's a PTA meeting tonight in, in Chappaqua. The PTA the, meeting tonight. Tonight, and the press has been invited or is being allowed to, to be there. So all right, we'll, we'll quite, definitely film that. They're not quite running away. They are running away, Mr. Reisman. Well, we call that woman yeah. 20 times, right. and so did all the other media, and she has not come up. Well, she has not stepped up. Yeah. She should be fired immediately, I think. Well, I. I, I I do think that this is a, a partly the responsibility of the school to instill some values in the, in the football team. I agree with you there, but I think I, I kind of agree with Bob that it's 
a great deal of this is really a, a, a one family that has had a pattern of this kind of thing happening before. I think, it's, I think it's dangerous to make a blanket assumption that Chappaqua has got some kind of systemic problem. I think that this is something that probably is seen in a lot of different places and maybe maybe something that you see often in wealthier communities you guys like making the same argument that Democrats made to me about President Clinton's <laughs> conduct, that it, everybody does. It happens all the time. Well, I, but yeah. let me tell you why you're wrong, yeah. both of you. Let me be the usual obnoxious guy that I am. Go all right. It is true that this, as I said to Mr. Eber, it happens all over the place. Yeah. But when it happens in a specific place, so egregious like this, and you know the stripper guy who rented the strip. He told me that he sent a lot of strippers over there. This isn't the first time it's happened. Right. There's a pattern of arrogance in that community, gentlemen. Right. There's a pattern of arrogance on the part of the school officials, and I believe on many parents, not just one set of parents, in that community in the sense that they allow their children to do these things, and then when the media comes down on them, oh, don't blame Chappaqua, well, baloney, well, Mr. Eber. Well, wait a minute. First of all, you have one of the most aggressive district attorneys in this country, Janine Pirro, she was the one who decided that the website case yeah, she was wrong, and could I not her. be prosecuted. Yeah, she, no, she would not. It's not a could not. She would not. Well, I, 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 t I tend to disagree. I don't think she could have. I think sure she had a free, she she, I think she had a free speech issue in that. Well, I'll let the judge case. decide that. And Parade she, these perps, send a message. And Parade them and send a message. I let think the judge. she had, I, I don't think you're going to disagree with her record on these issues, especially when Talk it comes stuff, to. I would have done a lot more especially on that Especially when it comes to uh, pornography and Internet issues. She was the one who decided not to prosecute those, those, that kid. On the um, on the internet issue, so, and I'm going to ask you if this case came out of Bensonhurst, yeah, if this case came out of Brooklyn, if this came came anywhere, this case, I would be on it. And this case came out, would you be on it, or is it because you have a nice leafy Tony cul-de-sac? Oh no, I'm prejudiced against rich people and up in Chicago. Because Chappaqua. the Clintons are, are are up Baloney. there. Any place this happens, I'm on it. Now, Mr. Reisman, sure. um, right. I'm I'm upset because I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the outrage from the community. I'm seeing, and I respect you both for coming in here. Believe me, it was hard to get anybody to come in here, and you guys stepped up. We talked to hundreds of people. We didn't see any outrage. We didn't see any kind of, well, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to condemn this activity. And I, I, come on. Well, I, th I think... I th I think there is a, uh, some outrage. I think a lot of it is anonymous. I think you're right. I think anonymous. A lot, yeah, outrage. I think, uh, well, it's not, it's not out front uh, as much as probably people would like to see. And that's been part of the self-torture in this hamlet, I think, right now, is that people are wondering where all of the, you know, the, uh, the leadership is. I think you have a point there. I think, though, I think that there really is something, there is something to this notion that wealth and privilege seem to be traded for some kind of uh, uh, commodity of immunity, you know, that this feeling that they can get away with it because they have money and because they have privilege and... There's an arrogance. There is an arrogance, but I don't think it's confined to Chappaqua. You can see it... But it doesn't matter. Years. We're talking yeah. about Chappaqua because it yeah. happened right. in Chappaqua. Right, right, You don't dismiss a case uh, I because also, it, it, you know. I also think, let's be real here, I think also there's a certain amount of uh, resonance with this case because the Clintons happen to live in Chappaqua. Ah, that you know, that gives to give it a headline, but look. Well, it, it, makes, it makes a lot of people interested in this story. Uh, they had nothing to do with it. I personally know that Bill Clinton was overseas when this party happened. He was not <laughs> there. He had nothing to do with it. Now, uh, Mr. I'm going to give you the last word, Mr. Eber, but uh, I, I'm a little bit disturbed by your tone. You think that I'm attacking this leafy community because you're rich. I'm not. I'm attacking it because I haven't seen appropriate outrage. The principal is running away and is a coward. It's a woman, by the way. And I think that the community has to send a message itself and said, we do not tolerate this behavior. So far, that message has not been forthcoming. Well, first of all, this is a criminal case. And these are allegations. I'm not saying they're true or they're not true. And they're coming up, and they are misdemeanors. We're going to see. That party. We're going to see. We're going to see what the criminal system does with this. Second of all, do not take my comments as any lack of condemnation of what went on. This is a parenting problem. My question to the Weens, I think to pronounce it is, what the hell kind of message were you sending you to bet. these kids? You bet. I happen to agree with you. I'm not days, necessarily. I, I'm not disagreeing with okay. that. What what message were you sending them? There were girls at this party. That's right. What message were you sending? That's the outrage. Yeah, but not yet. only girls, there were pot 
and it was booze and it, all right. But no, that's no. where the focus should be. You got on the town. It's, it's going to happen like in 50 no, minutes. Why are you not talking? Why are you focusing on the town? And why are you not focusing, if I may, on the parenting, right, on the morality? You, we got to run. We got to run. The parents are going to let the criminal justice system take care of I'm focusing on the town because I want to see more outrage and, and peer pressure from people like you. But I appreciate you stepping up. And you just said what I would have said. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Thank you. And let's go to the videotape right now. Hundreds of college students rampaging.